as it got away from Wilkie, not far enough for the runners to advance any more than the 90 feet they were entitled to. So now the bases are loaded, and all this happening with two outs and no one on base. But a big time opportunity, and let's see if another lefty comes up or if they pinch hit for Big Ross. And indeed, they're going to send a pinch hitter up for their first baseman. Jake Goodrow, one of their backup catchers who in limited opportunities, a sophomore out of Southwick, Massachusetts, hitting 250 on the season. And you know, Monty Lee's going to go ahead and make a change. And interestingly, for Big Russ, a lefty was sent up to the plate, but Monty Lee elects to take out the lefty Schnell. Tigers will use their fifth pitcher in the ball game. We have another pitching change of Doug Kingsmore here in the eighth inning. Monty Lee bringing out his closer, Riley Gilliam, and what is a save situation? So Gilliam trying to close the door right here. You would suppose he would close it out and be in line for his fourth save, trying to preserve the win for Travis Marr, but coming into a situation where the tying run will come to the plate. Now, Goodrow, the power hitting backup catcher who hasn't really put up big numbers yet, but he's had limited opportunities. He is a guy, though, who does have a potent bat, so they had sent the lefty up Goodrow to face the left-hander Schnell, but Monty Lee elected to remove Schnell, who would hit two batters and then walked a third in the inning to load the bases. Gilliam has really done a nice job out of that pen. And you see making his 11th appearance, noted the three saves, a junior out of Kennesaw, Georgia. A guy who has a plus fastball, but also relies a lot on his breaking ball. A two-pitch guy, a big curveball, and high velocity on that fastball. So here's Goodrow. Over one of the series, he was a pinch hitter in the ninth inning on Thursday night. 6'3", 255. And he looks at strike one. You have to be aggressive. If you're coming off the bench, you're fresh into the game. You want to get a good pitch and take a good swing. And right there, a big hack. Dewey Mountain in front, 0-2. season and has done a good job doing just that the strikeout Wilkie could have stepped on the plate and said throws to first and the strikeout ends the Eagles threat here in the eighth inning so Gilliam comes on three pitches puts out the fire head to the bottom of the eighth six three Tigers Tigers striking early once again this afternoon a two-run first inning Chris Williams delivering the RBI double. That made it a 2-0 game. And then later on, trailing 3-2, Clemson coming up with a big second on the team. If he's behind early. Center field, Baldelli. But, uh... timing a little hesitation by Martellini on well, hits today including his first homer of the year his last time up in the seventh solo blast to left field and that is a big hit from Teodosio a guy who has struggled as of late at the plate it's nice to see him come in and, and help the team yesterday with the sack bunt 
He's played great defense all year. And then today come in and, and get that big hit late in the game. I think that'll work wonders for his confidence. Stromberg, we've seen him stay quite busy down there. But they may be getting him ready at the very least to face Beer and a few batters if this inning continues. Two and one now, the count on Green. Left side, Alou cuts across and throws on to first. Nice play by the third baseman to end things in the Tigers' eighth. Clemson adding two more on the two-out, two-run double by Bryce Teodosio. So we head to the ninth. Tigers chasing an eighth ACC win on the year in another series sweep, leading eight to three. Boston College coming up with single runs in the second, third, and fourth innings. The first RBI delivered on a seeing eye grounder to right by the second baseman, Brian Dempsey. That made it a two to one game at the time. And then, Baldelli with the single with the man running Gallon from first, got him all the way around. And that was in the third tied at a two, two. They play small ball to set up a run in the fourth inning. They would eventually take the lead as that one gets away from Kyle Wilkie and Jake Alou comes home. Three, two game and they almost added a fourth run of the inning on the hard shot back to the box that hit off the body of Matt Clark. Palamaki with a man on third was thrown out at first to end the threat, although Clark had to leave the game after taking that shot. We certainly hope he's okay. BC led three to two into the bottom of the fifth, and the Tigers then struck for three. One of the runs coming home on a, another Titanic blast out of Seth Beer. Thompson adding a single run in the seventh on a Jordan Green home run, and then two in the eighth on Bryce Teodosio's two-out RBI double. Riley Gilliam came on, struck out the only batter he faced, the pinch hitter Goodrow in the eighth inning with the bases loaded. And now looking to close it out and get that fourth save on the season. And top of the order, Palamaki behind one and two in what has been a Rough weekend for him. He holds up right there. A year ago against BC, Gilliam pitching an inning in two thirds and coming up with a save. been the only time he's faced the Eagles right back to him he snags it boy Palamaki has hit two shots back to the box and doesn't have a hitch to show for it and Gilliam appears to be just fine as he fielded it cleanly wow and Palamaki has to be ready to get out of here no matter where he hits the ball it seems he's finding someone's glove or in this case a bare hand just a reaction time from Gilm, saw it bouncing by, just reached out and snagged it. Not your typical out, but hey, gets the job done. There will be a visit, though, from his head coach and the athletic trainer. Of course, in that situation, you can, if you don't have your hand, your finger's all the way extended, you can jam a finger, but I think Bonnie Lee wants to see him take a few pitches. Has to be a little bit of a sting, and that's probably not what his head coach wanted to see. See through it wildly. So the Tigers have already lost one pitcher off the bat of Palamaki on a hard shot to the box, and they hope that they haven't lost a second in their closer. And when he initially caught it, it didn't appear like he was in any kind of pain. He's going to stay out there. the 
5'10", 170-pound junior out of Kennesaw, Georgia, and just took a shot back to the box from a guy who's also from Kennesaw, Georgia, and Paul Amaki. So chances are they've played baseball against each other before. And then strike one delivered to Chris Gallon. William went to Kennesaw Mountain High. Palamaki went to Mount Perrin Christian, so they were not high school teammates, at least in terms of the final years of high school. Center field, Teodosio. And he'll put that one away, and that'll retire Galland, and the Eagles down to their final out. Tigers going for a 10 straight win, and I would challenge you to find a better winning streak against any other ACC opponent at this time. And you see again that Palamaki hard shot right back to the box. So another rough day for him. Palamaki 0 for 4 with a walk. And in the series, just one hit for a guy who was second in the ACC, hitting well over 400 when the weekend began. Baldelli hit into a 4-6-3 double play his last time up, but he's had a significantly better game than the previous two. He's two out of four. His first two hits in the series. Coming on singles, and one of them in the third. Producing the second run of the game, an RBI single. That drove home Gallon all the way from first because Gallon was on the move. There's been a lot of tough at-bats. For the most part, Boston College has been out of every game. Now you're coming to the plate late in the series, down by five. Just tough at bats to battle through. Aldelia had the count three and one. I'm trying to retire the fourth battery's face, and that will not be the case. The first base runner against the Tigers reliever. Here's Gian Martellini. You'd be more concerned, obviously, if this were a three-run game. It is a save situation for Gillum, who came on in a three-run ball game with the bases loaded in the last half inning. And we've got a ball called by Frank Sylvester, the umpire at second base right behind Gillum. So that'll move Paul Deli into scoring position. Leaning now with an opportunity to get his 19th RBI of the season with a base hit. Travis Marr in line to pick up his third victory. And interestingly enough, that would tie him for the team lead with the guy who started the ball game today, Jake Higginbotham. And now the Eagles one strike away from being swept for a third straight time by the Tigers. Speed stays high. I would suppose that Gillum will be told to keep that hand in ice, or at least they'll keep him around and give him some treatment after this game. Because he still has to have some sting in those fingers after taking that hard shot from Palamaki on the bounce. One would think, and uh, Smith, you know, three times in a row with this breaking ball. We want to see him probably go back to a, to a fastball and challenge Martellini. Payoff pitch. 
And a second walk in the inning puts two on with two outs. And the lefty batting Brayron coming up. And this is where I think Gillum can improve in these situations. Just gets ahead with his fastball. And with a guy with a plus fastball like he has, he just gets dependent on this breaking ball. And a lot of guys, especially at this level, they fall in love with their breaking pitches because guys just don't hit them as well. When you progress up in, into a higher level, higher competition of baseball, guys are going to make those adjustments. In order to be a successful, especially as a reliever, you have to establish your fastball first and foremost. Eight walks now issued in 11 and a third innings for Gillum this season. And that's ball one to Brayron, who... Comes up having struck out twice and grounded out to the pitcher twice in this game, 0 for 4. After getting hits in each of the first two games of the series, a pinch single on Thursday and a two-run homer in the ball game on Friday. Had to get to the opposite field. And once again, a... Two strike count of the batter, one and two. And center field should be easy enough for Teodosio. And he puts it away, and the Tigers have again swept the Boston College Eagles. Eight to three on a Saturday afternoon. Game in which Clemson used five pitchers and saw an early two nothing lead go away, but they were able to strike with a three run fifth. Seth Beer hit another home run. Jordan Green took it out of the park, and Bryce Teodosio's Two-run double in the eighth inning, adding some late insurance. Good weekend all the way around for the Tigers, who did the little things well and also did the big things in that case, too. Tigers came through huge. I would say a collective team effort. You saw some big hits late in games. Also, some solid starting pitching. Travis Moore gets the win, goes to 3-0. and Brian Rapp takes the loss, 2-3. and Riley Gillum is fourth save on the season for the Tigers, who get their 22nd win and improve to 8-4 and four in ACC play. For Kyle Parker, Pete Gannity saying so long. This has been a presentation of ESPN.